top five documentary films that every aspiring filmmaker should watch? Mm. Wow. I'm going to make a few friends with this list and a lot of enemies. Uh-oh. Um, just because I, I know a lot of these filmmakers. Um, we could do the top 100 later. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that. I think for people who are interested in, in, in making documentary films or working, working in documentaries, um, I mean, this is completely subjective, um, but the films that I go back to all the time and that, are, that really inspire me, no matter, how, no matter how many times I've seen them, um, I, let's see, I loved, um, I really loved The Civil War by Ken Burns, and I met him when that film was released back in 1991. <clears throat> right, right when it was broadcast on PBS, I met him at a screening and saw one of the episodes, one of the, one of the, one of the acts of that film. I think it was like an hour long. Um, and that was amazing. Um, the Civil War is, it's either nine or 13 hours long. I mean, it's a long film, but each episode sort of almost stands alone. So I would really watch that and see what he did with a story um, where none of the subjects are alive anymore. Um, most of those stories have sort of died in some way um, or have been passed on several times. I mean, what he did with that film is really a landmark achievement. Um, I, I loved Hoop Dreams, um, still do. I'm from Chicago, that's where they made that film. Um, I was starting my career in Chicago as they were making that film, and I actually was at their production headquarters, Kartemkwin's headquarters, uh, one day while they were in production and saw all of the tapes that they were shooting to make that film. There were like 800 tapes in a room about this big, you know, floor to ceiling, all labeled with the dates on the side. I mean, it was just like horrifying. It was just like, what is this? And my friend's like, this is, my, this is a movie called Hoop Dreams. That's gonna be great. You know, I, that, that, it's, a, it's an amazing film, but also I think it sort of feels like home. That's where I grew up. Um, so I love that. Um, I love The Fog of War. I love Errol Morris's film, The Fog of War. Um, he sat down Robert McNamara for about four days and did about 12 hours worth of interviews with him. And he caught Robert McNamara, who was the Secretary of Defense during the Vietnam War. <clears throat> he caught Robert McNamara at a moment in his life where I think he sort of wanted to just be honest and, and lay all his cards on the table, sort of have a mea culpa. Um, and it's really a study in, in interviewing, how to interview people really well. So I, I, I just love that film. Um, I think Man on Wire was terrific, and I liked that they um, relied really heavily on recreations, which I didn't really love that much. I, 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 um, I think I, I was sort of resistant to recreations within documentary films. Um, and, um, and yet, James did just an unbelievable job doing recreations that sort of fit very elegantly with the archival footage. It's just a great, great movie. It's also funny because it's one of those rare films where you know the ending. You know the ending when you start watching the film. The ending is on the poster. I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to give anything away, but I mean, you know where the movie's going, and yet it's a wonderful ride. So I, I just love that. And then the final film, hmm. You know, I love this movie called The Invisible War, which is done by uh, Kirby Dick, who doesn't live very far from here. Our friend Doug Blush uh, and, and Derek Boonstra, both friends of ours, edited that film. Um, it was nominated for an Academy Award in 2013. Um, what I love about that film, it's a great story. It's, it's about a very difficult subject, which is rape in the military and how the military handles these cases um, or, or really mishandles these cases. Um, 
And what I love about that film is that it's really a study in the impact of storytelling, the impact of documentary films. Um, I mean, Kirby and Doug and Derek and their team of about five or six people made their film about a mile from here in a small house. I mean, talk about a small, tiny little band of, of Davids, if you will. And the bad guy in this film is the US military, the most powerful organization on the planet by far. Um, and they took them down. Um, they told a story, a beautiful story, beautiful and very heartbreaking story about women and men who had been sexually abused in the military and the, the, the um, sort of mistreatment that they got, um, the injustice that they got in return uh, when they tried to blow the whistle on what had happened to them. And so they make this film, uh, they get accepted to Sundance, it screens at Sundance, it becomes this sensation, this movie that everyone needs to see. And then something really unbelievable happened, which is Leon Panetta, the Secretary of Defense at the time, saw the film on Air Force One. They landed, he called a press conference, and he said, I've just seen a film called The Invisible War and we are gonna start doing things differently in our military. This cannot go on any further. And they've made great strides. They could probably do more, hopefully they will, but they really change the way that they investigate these kinds of cases. They change the way that they punish these criminals who are sexually abusing people in their own ranks. Um, that's the power of filmmaking. It's the power of really good documentary filmmaking. And uh, I think that's a good number five for us.